Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video we'll be making our face wiggle effect and to do that we're going to be utilizing a variety of simple patches and then creating a grouped patch to make our life easier for the future. So we're just going to start off with adding our face tracker object like so and this face tracker object will be what we're going to be um, creating the wiggle effect on. So we're going to want to also use texture extraction. So we extract the facial features. So this texture here will be the face texture, essentially. I'm then going to add a face mesh to this face tracker, create a new material, select this new material and choose my face tracker texture and change its type to be flat. And now we should have our face over our face. So at the moment, it all is very much the same as we would do with any other effects that we are using facial features. Uh, but what we're wanting to do is I'm just going to turn off the eyes and mouth. So we keep the uh, full feature of the face where applicable. And we can always turn this back on later if it doesn't look quite right. I'm then going to go to view, show patch editor. I'm going to select my face tracker object, choose my interactions, and I'm going to go to face tracker, interactions, patch, create, mouth open. So now every time that this face is detected and this mouth opens, we want it to perform some actions. So when this mouth opens, we're going to want it to start playing an animation. So I'm going to click and drag from my mouth open patch to the top here. And I'm going to type in loop animation. Let's just make this a bit bigger so it's clearer. And then I'm going to link from my loop animation progress to a transition. And we're going to be using this transition value to do the wiggle or the rotation on our face mesh object. So select my face mesh object. We're going to want to import this into our face mesh later. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to keep as is because we're going to need to do something else. And to do, what we need to do is we need to tell it to do this only when the mouth is open a set amount. So I'm going to go for mouth open, uh, mouth openness, click and drag and type in less than. And then link from less than to an if then else patch and what I want to do is have happen here so this transition plays only with this condition here is met so I'm going to click and drag from my transition to my else on the is for else and it will come up with an error and this error is saying that the if uh, the uh, inputs aren't the same type don't need to worry about that that will be resolved in a moment once this patch is finished, then I'm going to click and drag from my if then else to a pack. So this takes our three values or one value and packs them into three. So this is our X, our Y, our Z, for example. I'm going to click and drag this to my Z value. And at this point, I can then go to my face mesh rotation and link this to the pack down here. So now we have our basic patch up and running. Uh, we need to do some fixes. So first off, we can see down here, we need to fix this uh, error message here. And the reason we're getting this error message is because we're taking three uh, numerical values and trying to put them into one. So we just need to change this transition type to be a number, like so. And what we do, this transition will now do is this is where we would put our beginning value and our ending value. So if our rotation is less than 0.2, then this condition isn't met. But if it's greater than, then it should have some wiggle. Now, we can't really see it doing anything because our values are so small. So I'm just going to change the end value to be something greater. So I'm going to go from 20 to 0, and we'll see what happens now. So you can see we've got this kind of effect going on, but it's not quite right. So I'm just going to change the mirrored option in the loop animation. Also adjust its duration. 
and then just see what happens now. So we've got this wiggle kind of happening, but again, it's still a little bit erratic. I'm going to change its type for the transition to bounce in and out. And I'm going to go from negative 20 to positive 20. So now we've got a bit more of a uh, strong wiggle going on there. And I'm just going to adjust my duration here to make it less uh, impactful. And I'm also going to turn on the mouth and eyes for a second. So at the moment, if it's, because this is uh, working off the face mesh, you'll notice that when it starts wiggling, it's actually going off the edges. So to fix that, we need to add in our alpha mesh. So it, to do that, we're going to import the default face mesh texture that is included from Facebook. So I'm going to go to help, download face assets. And just download the face mesh PNG. I'm going to go to my textures and just import the face mesh mask texture. And if I go to my face mesh material, go to alpha, enable it and choose my face mesh texture now. We should start to see this sort of edging going on a bit more. I'm just going to keep tweaking it until it sort of looks roughly what I want it to look like. So I'm actually going to go back to my material here, go to alpha test, turn that on and adjust its cutoff. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to keep it so I keep just the very middle of the face and the edges are mainly there. And these values might be a bit too extreme for that. So I'm actually going to go with negative 10, 10. And again, it's just tweaking the values until it sort of looks roughly right. So we've got a wiggle going on there. Uh, what we could do is if we want to be able to control this um, and make our life easier in the long run, we can simply select all of the this here. So we include so selecting all the patches from mouth open to the pack. I'm going to right click and select group and I'm going to call this new group our wiggle group and what we can do is we can use this uh, as a kind of grouping of all those patches so if I was to expand this you can see all our original patches still there and what, but what I can do is using this as a group I can always import more options into it so I could have uh, more complicated part uh, patches linking together across multiple groups so if I go to group properties and I go to the inputs, I can always I can go to add to create a new input. And this new input I'm going to call um, duration and it's going to be a number. I'm going to create another input. This is also going to be a number and this is going to be um, my start value. So this will be the start value for my uh, rotation or the amount it's going to uh, basically wiggle. I'm also going to do one for the end value for that. So if I now open this up, you notice I have these new free linked patches here, which are currently not doing anything. So I could link my duration here to my loop animation. I'll link my start value to my transition start and what I want to do is I also want to link my end value to my end value on my transition. What I'm actually going to do though is I'm going to click and drag and add a negate. So what this will do is turn a positive number into a negative number because I want it to go from one side to the other. Because if I just typed in 10, negative 10 each time, it could get quite annoying. But by using a negate, it can make life a lot easier and basically flips that value uh, around. So I'm going to link this to my transition end. So you should have something that looks like this. If I go back to my main patch, I now have these three values here that I can man now control without having to go into the group. 
So I could go with 10, 10, and give it a duration of, let's say, 0 0.2. And now if I was to wait and when the mail opens now, these values will be linked back into that grouping. And what I could also do is I could link these into other controllers up here. So we could have a native UI slider and link that into our duration. So when we slide the value up or down, we could have the duration change based on that. And uh, we can do the same with values here. So the start and end of the rotation values, we could have conditions met beforehand that will tell it yes or no. Uh, if I want to go back and adjust these, I can go into the group properties. So I could say that my start value, for example, is going to have a maximum limit of 10 because I know any more than that, it starts to go off screen too much. I could do the same with the end value, like so. Oop. Uh, a value of 10 in and there's a negate in there that basically um, it didn't like it. But you kind of get the idea is I could set a maximum and it would then mean that I am restrained to that value. So I've just relaunched the project. Um, in fact, this is a different version of project. This is a version of project I've been using as a reference that I uh, created earlier. Um, and what this one does is this one also has a few extra additions. So let me just show you what this extra addition is here. So what I did is I created a mouth open condition here. So that when the mouth is open, greater, greater or equal to a certain value, this extra plane will appear and the words R ah, will be scaled up out of the mouth. And again, if we look at our face map material here, we have our face track and mesh uh, alpha material applied. And I actually went into Photoshop and just trimmed it even more to make it a bit smaller. So it's less um, to add only just the very, very middle of the face doing it. So the rotation isn't quite as um, uh, off centered. But as you can see, again, we've got this same uh, group patch that we created that still has all of our values in. And we can always go in here and tweak things or by having it grouped, we could always go into the group uh, properties and adjust the values like so. So I hope this sort of helps and just gives you a little extra thing that you can do that's quite easy and uh, to achieve with Spark AR. Thank you for watching.